Hello, I'm Jim Kennard. It's early May and it's 42 degrees north latitude and about 4,300 foot elevation. We have a greenhouse, so we've been growing all through the winter. I'm going to show you today what's in my greenhouse and what we're doing in the garden as well. First off, we have several things that have been here all year long. The parsley that you see, we have managed to keep up with it until the last couple of months, and then it got ahead of us and has gone to seed. So we'll be taking that out and putting new herbs in within the next few days. We also have seedlings that we have been growing on a table, and we have been taking them out and bringing them in uh, when it's frosty. We hopefully will have most all of these planted outside this week. On the other side of the greenhouse, we have Swiss chard that has been here ever since last spring. We have managed to eat that on a weekly basis. Again, here as it warms up, it has gotten ahead of us and going to seed and we'll be taking that out because we have new Swiss chard planted that's already ready to harvest and we have harvested a couple of times. The celery that you see has been in the greenhouse since October. We planted it out in the garden a year ago and harvested it weekly until frost was imminent and then we brought it in. And we have taken down four of the complete stalks and juiced them. We will take these others down in the next day or two, juice them and put new plants out. Here in the center bed, we have newly planted pole peas that are just coming up and pole beans also just coming up. And on this third of the bed, we have cucumbers. We have pickling cucumbers here and sweeter yet cucumbers there. These are climbing, so we have strings that we tie at the top, tie a slip knot at the bottom, and then gently guide the stem around the strings so that they are up out of the way and they will reach eight feet in about two months and continue to grow and come back down and we will harvest these probably until December when we will take them out because they will be too ugly and miserable to work with. And at this end of the greenhouse we have indeterminate tomatoes they are not big enough yet in order to require putting up on strings, but we already have the wire down here and we have the baling twine strings available. These are nine inches apart and we will have hundreds of pounds of tomatoes. Over on this side of the greenhouse, we have got peppers, bell peppers, and banana and uh, several different varieties. We also have eggplant on this end and we will just be planting these two varieties. These both are white eggplant and we'll be planting those in this empty space this week. The southeast corner of the greenhouse we have romaine lettuce and next to that we have an orange tree it's actually mandarin orange. We've had a few fruits off of that. Notice that the bed up through this point is filled and ready to plant. This is what a bed looks like when it has gone two or three years without having sawdust and sand added to it. We've had strawberries in here for three or four years. And so we will be adding some sawdust to this and replanting new vegetables in there. 
Even in a greenhouse, one of the earliest things we will plant is radishes. And that's because they're very hardy, they're very fast growing, they show deficiency symptoms quickly, and they are very nutritious. We have uh, both red and white radishes here. And we will eat those several times a week. Most people neglect one of the most nutritious parts of the radish. We really need to be eating what we call the secondary edible parts of the plants. They're very good for you. We're now outside on the south end of the greenhouse and the south end of the garden. This garlic is in an 18 inch wide, 24 foot long bed. We planted it uh, mid-October last year and it is growing well. In the four foot bed next to it, we have corn on the north side. That will come up here in the next day or two as we get warm weather. And about two weeks after that, we'll put corn on the south side. And then we will plant a third planting of corn in the dirt in about a month. Immediately to the west of the greenhouse, we have another four foot box that is 16 feet long. Right now we have it planted in potatoes, the first third, and we will put other things in here today and I will show you that later. We have another four foot wide, 16 foot long box that is filled with potatoes. Again, they will be coming up momentarily as the weather warms we'll see them starting to pop through the soil. Our third box of potatoes, again, four feet wide, 16 feet long, planted in different varieties. They all were planted just about a week ago and we've had some cold weather, so they have not popped out of the ground yet. I've dug them up, seen that they are in fact growing, and it's any day now. The adjacent box is filled with sweet meat squash on this side. This will be coming up momentarily as the weather warms. And on the west side we have tomatoes. Because we had several nights of freezing weather and we wanted to make sure we protected our tomatoes, we covered them with greenhouse plastic. You see that we used these arch PVC, what we call a low tunnel or an A-frame and we clip the plastic to it <clears throat> with a three quarter inch piece of PVC pipe that's been cut away so that that will go on there and hold that in place. At night when the temperatures get down into the 30s, we will cover this bed and put a small space heater inside at a low heat and that will keep it toasty warm inside through a night of even below 30 degrees. We're now looking at the dirt part of our garden. We have four soil beds, 24 feet long, 18 inches wide, and they are in various stages of preparation. The thing I want to point out is that once you have built your beds and got them level and ridged, you don't ever have to do the major work again. The aisles, you pretty much leave alone, just keep them weeded and raked out. This bed hasn't been touched very much since last fall. I did put some water to it the other day so that it'll dig more easily. The second bed here is ready to plant and we will be putting onions in this today. So you'll see that happen. The third bed hasn't been touched since fall, other than a little bit of weeding. But you'll see how quickly these come together in order to be able to plant very quickly and easily. The fourth bed, similarly, it has been touched up and uh, all it needs to be done is dug out and fertilized remake the ridges and it'll be ready to go. Let's talk about the tools we need now. We have three tools sitting here. We have an echo 
small tiller. It's about a 10 inch wide blade. It'll stir up about 12 inches as it goes. And that's really handy for a small a narrow bed, 18 inch bed or box. Uh, but it costs almost $300. Takes gasoline, mixed gas, and it also requires repairs once in a while. Here we have a short handle spade. You can use a short handle or a long handle, either one. That works really well. And I like even, sometimes even a little better, this one that is a digging fork. Again, it's about eight or 10 inches wide and it will go into these beds very easily and make short work of the digging process. So let me just illustrate how to prepare a bed for you. We'll be uh, transplanting these strawberries into this bed, but first we want to get the fertilizer into the soil. If you are familiar with the Mittlider method of growing, you'll know that you should have weekly feed, one half ounce per foot. So I have 12 ounces of weekly feed and the pre-plant one ounce per foot. So we have 24 ounces of the pre-plant. So you can watch me put these down into the soil and then we'll dig it in. As you get experienced, you'll be able to do that pretty evenly. And here goes the pre-plant. Half of it going down and half of it coming back. And hopefully we get it pretty evenly distributed. And using the digging fork, I will dig it into the soil. You do not want to stand in the bed. Stand to the side. Turn it over. You want to go at least eight inches deep. And try not to disturb the ridges. all the way down the length of the bed. Removing any roots, rhizomes or runners that you find from perennial weeds. Okay, we'll uh, finish that up and then you can come back and watch me finish preparing the bed. As I said, remove roots, rhizomes and runners if there are any. Make sure that you're not having any perennial weeds in your bed as you get started. The problem here is I have a, a border, a ridge there, but sometimes those roots come underneath the border and get into my garden. So I still have to be vigilant about getting those out. It would be much better if I had a five foot dry, bare perimeter, but aesthetics have dictated otherwise in this situation. Now whenever you're using a bed for the second or third year, you remember that it was level last year. We want to keep it level and that's why I was going carefully trying to move the same amount of dirt at each step. We'll see if we have retained the level condition of our bed here. Tiny bit of a drop, quarter of an inch. Dead level. And almost dead level. So the condition is still level, just the way we need it. 
we're going to be building the ridges back up and making sure that we keep the level in the bed. I go to the center of the bed, pull an inch or so of soil. I want to end up with ridges four inches high directly under the string. If I have any roots, I always want to remove them. When I have the ridges built, I like to tap the inside of them to firm them up. It also gives me another half inch to an inch width. By doing that, the ridges hold up better and I have a little wider planting area. You don't move it much, just tap it to strengthen it. Okay, we will now check the level. Center of the bed, almost perfect, just a tiny bit low on that end, which is what you want because your water source is this end. Perfectly level. And perfectly level. With an automatic watering system that waters the entire length of the bed, you like it to be level. You don't want to have low spots, or the water will run to those low spots and take your fertilizer with it. We're now ready to transplant some strawberries, and I'm going to put them nine inches apart on both sides of the bed, alternating, and I'll show you how I do that. Using the six inch mark, set it at one edge, and pull it across. Then standing on the opposite side from which you're going to be planting, Dig a hole big enough to accommodate the root ball. Now we actually have several plants there. Difficult to pull them apart. So I'm going to plant it like that and just give it a little more room. So I think I'll make it 12 inches between these because they are so big and sturdy and robust plants. Once you've got one side done, Come to the other side, reach across, and make your holes. By the way, you always want to make sure that your plants are well hydrated before you transplant them. The bed doesn't have to be newly watered. But the plants do need to be hydrated before you put them in the soil. Then you will quickly water to make sure that there's ample water to the roots. As soon as you get these plants planted, you'll want to add nitrogen, and that's a quarter ounce per running foot. So in this 24 foot bed, we'll put six ounces of nitrogen down and then we immediately will water it in. Next we will transplant onions and we want to water them before we transplant them. Always make sure that your plants are hydrated. You can use You can use a can with holes in it, 
or you can submerge the plants in the water. That's a very quick and thorough way of getting them. You'll see the bubbles coming up. That shows that the water is soaking those plants good. Once your plants are thoroughly hydrated, you can take them out of the pot and start to separate them. And we will actually plant them four inches apart in both directions. So we will go at zero and four, eight, twelve. Now you might notice that the soil is so dry that it will not hold that hole open. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to water this some right now, then wait an hour or so and do the transplanting so that those holes will stay open. Otherwise, it's a real hassle to get them in. In the sawdust and sand, it's much easier than having it stay open in the, in the dirt if it hasn't been watered. We're now ready to plant onions. These are going to be planted four inches apart both directions. So we will go at the ridge, four inches in, eight inches in, 12 inch, which is the opposite ridge. And then we're marking six inches. So we go on the mark and then two thirds and one third and then on the mark. So let's plant onions. Make the hole big enough to accommodate the roots. Put it down deep. And if you've got a dibble, use the dibble. A dibble, of course, is a six inch doweling rod with a sharpened end. Make the hole big enough so that those roots aren't too crowded. And you've got the problem of having the soil go back in the hole if you don't have it wet enough and have it too wet and it's clay too hard. We've got our onions planted. We've now given them a quarter ounce per foot of nitrogen as we water and having a lot of them tip over after the watering, I am now standing them up so they won't have a difficulty getting started again. In this 16 foot, four foot wide box, we have potatoes in about six feet and we will have celery and cabbage and zucchini. So of course we've got to prepare the soil before I put the sawdust down to fill it up again. I applied the fertilizer, weekly feed and pre-plant. Now I'm using the simple digging fork, making sure I get it eight inches deep, turn it over, as you can see, in a sawdust and sand box, it's really simple and fast and easy. What are you saying? It only takes a couple of minutes to dig it up like this. Then I'll take the digging fork and go through it like this to break up the clods and smooth out the soil, level the soil a little bit more. And I've done that for a couple of minutes, then I'll get the rake Daddy. and level it, and then we'll be ready to plant. I'll show you the rake here in a minute. We break up the clods a little bit more, smooth out the soil. Daddy. 
This will settle the soil a little bit more. And then we just smooth it out and level it. You can use a screed if you want. For one like this, I just usually just rake it out. Do the same to the other side and then we're ready to plant. Only took a few minutes and it's ready to plant. We'll put zucchini, two different kinds, both green and the European pale color, but we really like. And we will put them three across and I'm putting two in each hole just as a temporary measure to make sure that they come up because these are older seeds and we don't want to take a chance of not having anything germinal. So, and we're doing them 21 inches apart. Using the seven inch marker, you got the first mark, second, third, fourth mark. We'll now plant three rows of celery, four across. These will feed us clear into next April or May. We've made sure that our cabbage is well hydrated and that we will plant that. Got plenty of room here. So we're going to give them 14 inches rather than the normal 12 inches. Just because we don't have enough to do a second crop. These potatoes are starting right there. Whenever we transplant, we always want to make sure and remove one or two leaves just because transplant shock makes it very difficult for the plant to support all of the leaves that it had before. So we will always remove one or two leaves. And the last thing we do whenever we transplant is we give the plants a quarter of an ounce per running foot of nitrogen. I'll go do that and then we'll water it in and we'll be finished. Now we are giving them a little chocolate candy bar to give them a, a boost at the time of transplanting. That quarter of an ounce per running foot of nitrogen is a real help to the plants to overcome that transplant shock. We'll now water that in. And we will also water in the seeds from the zucchini. And we'll be finished with this bed.